Welcome to PyRevit series on Revit MEP. In this series, I'll share practical examples of how to use Python with Revit API. For this first episode, I have picked a cool and useful topic, creating docs, pipes, cable trays, and conduits with fittings using Revit API. Personally, I struggled a bit to figure this out at the beginning, so I thought this would be a great way to kick off the series and hopefully help you too. Before we jump in, make sure you have PyRevit installed. If you don't know what PyRevit is, just give it a quick Google. I am not going to explain everything here, otherwise this video would take too long. Also, I am using Revit 25. If you are on an older version, this script might not work exactly the same way because Revit API changes each year. So idly use Revit 2025 or feel free to try it on an older version. If you run into issues, drop a comment and I'll try to help. Now go to my GitHub account. The link is in the description. Download the repository. So I have downloaded here. Unzip it. Inside, you'll find a sample Revit project file. And PyRevit extension folder. So right now double click on the Revit file. I have already loaded families for docs, fittings, piping, table trays and conduits. And here you can see in 3D view, we have some lines that we will use to create docs, pipes, table trays and conduits. So once you have installed PyRevit, you should see a new PyRevit tab in Revit. Click it. Open the drop down, go to settings. So, here we have to import the Revit extension that we have downloaded from my GitHub account. Click on add folder, then navigate to where you save the folder called Revit API map.extension. Important select the folder that contains dot extension folder, not the folder itself. Okay, so just click on Select folder, save settings, and reload. If everything went well, you will now see a new tab in Revit MEP. Click, or click it. Right now, it contains only one command, and that's what we are going to explore. First, I'll show you how the script works. Then we'll break down the code step by step. So if you click the button without selecting anything, you'll see a warning. And it is asking you to select lines before running this command. Okay, click on okay. So now before running it, select just one group of these lines like so. Now run this command. Now you'll see four options. One for creating ducts, pipes, cable tray, and conduits. So let's go one by one. Click on create duct network. A small UI will appear, letting you choose a duct family. So choose this one with, that says with fittings. This one is for selecting the duct system. And the third one, we have to specify the level where we want to create the ducts. Pick the level zero. I know this UI could be prettier, but this is just a learning example. So I kept it simple. So once you have picked your options and click select, your model lines are now actual Revit ducts element with fittings. So you can check it. This is a whole duct network and everything is connected. Same process for piping, select model lines, run the command, create pipe network, pipe with fittings, and here we have this beautiful piping network. Let's create cable trays now. For now, let's create cable trays, select model lines, cable tray network, and finally, let's see. Conduits. Create conduits. 
with fittings. Now that you have seen how it works, let's walk through the logic behind it. I work with Visual Studio Code. Let's open the folder where we have downloaded the repository. Downloads, Revit API, and let's open this folder. And navigate to MEP routing dot push button. Inside this folder, we have script.py, which is entry point for our application. Click on it. Now I will explain the code of script.py. These two first line, it shows just who creates the file and little documentation about what the script does. Here we are importing tools that we will use along throughout the script. Here we are just importing the Python tools, Revit API classes. Pi Revit tools. This one is used to show warnings to user. So this one is a standard user interface to select from a list of command options. And here we are importing our custom tools that you can find inside utils.py. These two variables gives us access to Revit. The first one, the doc, is the actual Revit model. And this variable user interface document helps us to select Revit elements. As you can see here, we are getting the current selection in the model. If user hasn't selected anything, we show a warning and we exit the script. So here we only accept the model lines as input. If the user selects something else or anything, we stop the script with a warning. So here we are showing a user interface where user has to pick one of these options. If user doesn't select anything, we show a warning and exit the script. This part of code, we are collecting data from Revit model based on user selection. If user, for example, selected create doc network, we are collecting doc pipes and doc systems. So for example, for cable tray, we are only collecting cable tray types. And all this data that we have collected, we show in a window to user to pick one of the option. One for, for example, doc type, doc system, and, and a level where elements will be placed. The data that comes from FlexForm, we are saving in these variables. So here we have MEP elements and empty list. We will store here the MEP curve element that we are going to create. We have another empty list. MEP elements connectors. Here we will store the connectors of element. We start a transaction group. We start the first transaction. And here for each selected line, we are creating a MEP curve element based on user selection. We add this element into the list. And we also add the connectors of this element into MEP elements connectors because later on we will use this list to create fittings. So this part of code, first create the MEP curve element like cable tray, pipe, docs, and conduits. After that here, we are grouping the connectors based on the origin. Later I will explain how I use this technique to create fittings. Finally, this part of code creates fittings inside Revit model. How do we create? I will explain later with little more detail, but here is the idea. For each group, we filter elements like docs and once we have the elements we can create a fitting between these elements and now i will explain you a little in detail how i managed to create fittings so revit fittings like elbows these crosses are only created when the elements like dots pipes etc are connected directly at a common point okay like you can see here at this cross we have four different elements in t fitting we have three different elements here for elbow fitting we have two different elements so that's why your input model lines must be clean like so because in right now in the script i am providing you has is not doing any geometry analysis so here i have showed you some example for example if you have two lines crossing each other this script will not create any cross fitting if you have gaps between two lines, 
then there will be no elbow fitting there. The same thing happens for T. You should have for elbow two elements for P e, three and for cross four. So finally, here a brief explanation of how we create cross fittings, elbow and T fittings. So in Revit API, you have these methods which takes as parameters connector elements and automatically Revit creates fittings based on these connectors. But one thing is clear. These connectors must meet at some same point. So for example, here if you have this type of line network, we have to provide the connectors that are close to this point and Revit automatically will place a E fitting there. Here we have four elements that are being connected to each other in this point. So here we will have four connectors like so. We will provide these four connectors to a method and it will automatically place a cross fitting. And the same thing happens for elbow fittings. There will be a connector here, here. We will find these two connectors and we will provide to a method and it will automatically create this elbow fitting. So let me go back to my code. This function groups all connectors by their origin point. For example, if three connectors are at the same location, they are added into one group. Each group represents a one fitting. For example, if in a group we have three elements, then it represents P fitting. If a group has two connectors, then it represents an elbow fitting. It has four, then automatically a cross fitting. Here we go through each connector group and we collect all the ducts or pipes that are connected to the connectors in the group, in that group. You can go, of course, inside this method and take a look on this documentation. And finally, we provide connected ducts to this create fittings method. Let's go to this method. And here, as you can see, based on the number of ducts we are passing to this method, if we have two ducts, then it creates elbow fitting. If we pass three ducts, it will create a T fitting. If we pass four ducts, it will create a cross fitting. This method I found on a building coder website. It helped me a lot. So if you want to check, you can Google it. That's all. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Thank you.